Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and today is a very special vlog, isn't it, Helena? It's our open weekend. <gasps> and it is actually our open weekend right now which is very exciting. Um, but this will be going up just a little bit after the open weekend. But we just wanted to kind of, we know not everyone can make it down to Devon. We live in a tricky bit of the world to get to. So we wanted to give you a feel of what it's like, didn't we, House? Yeah, so we're just gonna show you around a little bit so yeah. you can see what we got up to and Definitely. everything we have here. Yeah. Uh, all the exciting other vendors yeah. we've got. Yeah and specials and, and in a cafe yeah. and some teachers and yeah, just see the beautiful yeah. assembly rooms that we're Definitely. in again Definitely. and chat with some of the mill folks i'm gonna we're gonna try and rope in some people who don't usually make an appearance on the vlog i've already managed to rope in helena this is helena for everyone who always asks who is helena <laughs> i do appear on the you vlog. you do appear on the vlog you do appear on the vlog that is true <laughs> Yes. And I'm very grateful for it. We all wear our little badges. Here, yes, so we, do. we do. know who we are. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, just join us for the fun. And um, most excitingly, we're going to show you all of these incredible specials and chat with the folks who helped us make them, tell you a bit about all of them. Um, and these specials will all go up for our virtual open weekend, which is in just a couple of weeks' time very very soon and um, there we'll have some zoom classes and also all of these delicious treats will go up on the website so it's the 8th and 9th of July um, and it's going to be a blast like it was last year so come with us and we'll show you around yeah and uh, show you a bit more about these We had a little cow, didn't we? We had a little mini cow. We did, yes. For the open weekend. And you were joking that I would win. Yes, because you are the speediest knitter that I know. You and are super quick. I lost spectacularly. You did, yes. And you I won. won. <laughs> <laughs> and you made something absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It is um, with our lovely Coleoptera yarn. It's very beautiful. And an absolutely beautiful pattern, caveat tea by Meiju. Um, and it is lovely. And yeah. we were very, very lucky that Meiju came here, oh, weren't nice. we? Oh, she came so, to visit with her family. Yes, it was one, which is really why I wanted to get this finished. Yeah, it was so. But very sad that it's too warm to wear it, unfortunately. That's okay. But it's lovely. But the mannequin's been wearing it beautifully. And people so. have been admiring it. They a have. Lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. And it was lovely for her to be able to see. It was, well. yeah. So. So. Very, very lovely lady. Beautiful yeah. designs. And yeah. if you'd like to have a look at the pattern, we'll just pop it below. Won't yes. We, Donna? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yes, do I get a prize? You should. I should. You? I should get a prize. What is the prize? Uh, Slice of cake. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Slice, oh, of, Slice cake. of cake. And <laughs> a glass of wine. A glass of wine at some point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> So the most exciting thing, we think at least, um, about the open week, obviously it's amazing meeting people at the open weekend yes. and having visitors, but I think one of the most exciting things is that we get to make a special yarn, don't we, Helena? Yes. <laughs> whole little mini range special. Exactly. And we get to do something a little bit complicated or a little bit wacky, because we know we don't have to do it all the time. <laughs> so. So this year, we decided we wanted to make a mull, which is slightly more complicated than yeah. just making one that isn't mulled. And yeah, it does make a lot of the staff try and kill us occasionally. I know we were. It was there were some points throughout the process where I was a bit like, "Ooh, <laughs> we have made this a bit complicated for ourselves." <laughs> but basically, what we've done is we've made a, a four ply DK yarn. So it's got four different strands in it, which means you can have up to four different colours in it. 
and uh, we made 10 colours in total. Yes. We were only supposed to make five, and then it was going to be six, and then it was seven, and then we had 12, and we went, no, this is way too many for a one-off range. So we settled on 10. Uh, everyone in the mill nice had a round number. Yeah. Everyone in the mill had some input while they're having all the colours laid out, so they could be like, "Oh, I like that one," or "Oh, I like that one." Yeah. Um, but yes, so we made many, 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 many. I think there's 64 of them or something around that. Yeah, <laughs> different <laughs> variants. We started with 12 different colours of tops blends. So we, what we did first was we blended up. Um, with some hand cards. Matches your top. I'm wearing one of them. <laughs> we blended up um, some recipes and we knew we had, we've just bought some Jacob, haven't we, Hells? So we knew we wanted to use the Jacob and then we knew we wanted to use Merino because it softens it and it's really nice and round and then you get a nice Good sort bright colours to play with as exactly, well. Exactly, because the Jacob, because it's quite a pale grey, it will make everything more muted. So we wanted the really primary colours from yeah. the merino. This particular batch of Jacob that we got is a very kind of like tan grey kind of colour. So it just looks nice, soft, warm, neutral undertone. Yeah, exactly. And it's 35% uh, of yes. these is that. So it's similar formula to our Harvest Hues, but yeah. where the Harvest Hues has the nice rich dark swabbles, this has the nice calm Jacob. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it makes it, yeah, it's nice and poofy to yeah, Jacob. It's lovely yeah, stuff. It's, this it's got is a nice very crunch. Soft. So we then made 12, we spun 12 different colours of singles and then, and we then had some plying experiments. <laughs> so lots of different ones. So like this was using what we were calling the black base mm. and we tried this many different combos and like this one here, we've got a mustard oh, and then bring there's the mustard. a couple of pinks. So yeah, there's a lot of different ones. Mm. And in the end, we worked out, uh, we only needed nine of the base colors yes. in the end yes. to make the final colors of the yarn. So there are nine different tops colors as part of the special and then 10 different actual yeah. yarn ones. Exactly. Um, so you are able to make the 10 colors of the yarn from the nine things of tops, yeah. or you could try and make most of make these. Make your own ones. If I was a there were I mean, a lot that a we, where we had to narrow yeah. it down, and we loved something, but we just yeah. thought we just can't fit it in, or yeah. it just doesn't go with the other ones. And exactly. And we were that. trying a little bit to use the same colour in some of the yarns, so that we made yes. our work a little bit. In easier. the final ten yarn colours, uh, we've got two that aren't mild at all: the red one and the turquoise one. And then quite a lot of the other ones have just one strand in, so it's a really subtle mull. So it looks a lot like the heathering that you get in some of our other yarns. Yeah. So like, say, the Apple Door or the Yarnadelic kind of look. Uh, and then um, two of them, I think, these two, both have four different colours in. And that one is Friendly Robin and Bellotti Bean. Bellotti Bean. So yeah. I'm favourite that one. Um, and the other, I think there's a couple in there that have three. Yeah. So it's sort of a different level. Some of them are a bit more vibrant. Some of them are quite subtle. Um, there are lots of different fun ones in there. So exactly. lots of different things you can try. But Yeah, and yeah. we'd love to see if you hand spin, we'd be absolutely amazed to see it. if folks do the same kind of marling experiments. We'd love to see what you come up with and then uh, what vegos you're going to name your own hand spun after. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Why not embrace the theme? So we'll give you a little close up of um, every single colour in detail as well in a minute because I know that's quite tricky on a computer screen so we'll do our best to help with that but uh, yeah. And then with the allotment theme I think just there's a couple of us at work who are quite keen gardeners, aren't there? Like Lauren's got a beautiful garden yes. and Sam and yeah, I try with mine, but it's a bit ramshackle sometimes. <laughs> um, so it just felt like a really nice natural. And then also, as you said, all the colors are a bit more muted. So it seemed like the kind of thing you get on an allotment where everything's a little bit covered in, you know, soil. <laughs> So, um, yeah, come with us and we'll show you all the shades. We're going to give you a little close up of all the shades now. And we've kind of split them into two little colour palettes because that seems to be how they're friendliest. So, 
This is the first one, and then um, this one's quite bright, and then we've got another one's just hiding behind you, isn't it? Yes. So we'll get it out. And that's a bit more muted, so. These are Sonia's colour palette. Yes. Everybody else's colour palette. <laughs> exactly. I always like the grungy ones. But actually, that being said, I love some of these bright ones too, so let's yes. get stuck into the bright ones. So these are the more colourful shades in the range, aren't they? Yes, some of them and are quite bright. Some of them are quite bright, definitely. Do so you, you have a favourite with these? Oh, I can't pick. We had to narrow this down from like 60 to 10. I can't then pick a favourite after that. I, just these 10 is enough of a favourite. No, you're quite right, Eleanor. <laughs> um, this was a last minute addition, wasn't it? Friendly it's been very Robin. popular this weekend. Lots it of has. people have said they like this one. I know, folks have really liked it. It's quite a unique colour, but it knits up really beautifully, actually. And we actually added this as a last minute addition because we knew we wanted the red and the mustard, didn't we? Yes. And then we just needed a way of tying them together and kind of uniting the palette. So, so that's one of the ones that has four different colours in it. Mm. So it has one of the red, one of the mustard yellow, and one of the neutral. Yes. And it one does. of the sort of, there's like an olivey browny colour one in there as well. Yeah. But yeah, that makes that nice sort of mottled but quite warm neutral yeah color. i think it would be a great kind of one to have for a whole jumper wouldn't it because it'd just go really well with jeans or yeah. you know anything so then we've got this nice primary bright red this, this one is scotch bonnet and it's one of the only ones that isn't mild yes so the tops is the exact same color yes um, and then the yellow one is, is that tea and biscuits? That one is tea and biscuits. It's a very important thing to have at the allotment. <laughs> you know, you've got to, it's hard work. Yeah. Especially if you've been digging something over. You've got to have a lots of biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> and it's this nice buttery neutral. So it's sort of, you know, custard creams maybe. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then this one is garden shed because Lauren has a garden shed that's this colour. Yeah. This is why everyone was like, well, is it that colour? But yeah, I think that's exactly. a really nice colour for the shed on your, it sounds, in your garden or allotment. very cheerful. It'd go well with all the green around, wouldn't it? But yeah, we couldn't find a vegetable. That was... <laughs> I think any vegetable that colour might be poisonous, but maybe there's something. And then this is, I think this is another one of my favourites. It's really something quite special, I think, this and colour. This one it? is called bird bath. Yeah. It's, again, a thing that's very important to have so yeah. that you can have lots of nice little friends come I visit know, you. I know. Um, Every time you watch Gardener's World or like read anything about gardening, they're always like, what you need is some water. Just have water and then the nature will turn up. So Yes. I would... There was something recently about making sure you've got mud for house martins. So that's what they build their nests oh, with. So you need to make sure you've got God. mud. So you do need to have the water so that they can yeah, build nice little nests. Amazing. So this time, this palette is Sonia's favorite. Purpley, greeny, neutrals, very much Sonia's vibe. Making a jumper in these ones. I am, I'm making a jumper in all five of these because I couldn't pick. Yeah. Stripes. <laughs> Um, so yes, do you want to show us the yeah. first one? Yeah, so this is quite, I think this is quite sophisticated. It's a very lovely, warm, grown up yeah. neutral. This Definitely. one is potato patch. Yeah, this is Lauren's favourite colour and I always think Lauren's quite sophisticated. <laughs> so. Very true. <laughs> um, this one, it's uh, the neutral colour in the top, so it's got like some greens and some orange in it. So it's got, you can see a little bit of speckle in there of the different colours mm. and then it's got the like sort of uh, brownie olive one is the one that's mild into it so yeah. it's like it's got a lot of nuance um, but yeah it's really very yeah. subtle and just because it was too sophisticated we called it potato patch just but to it's bring also it down a notch the color of potatoes with a bit of dirt on them <laughs> exactly fresh earlies first yeah. earlies delicious so then this next one is one of the darker colors i'd say yeah and um, this, this one's one... purple sprouting it's purple because it's purple we're, we're very um I don't know. Thinking very hard Literally. about these colours. <laughs> like, this is purple. Exactly. But it is actually because there's a little bit of green in there because yes. it's plied with a green single too. So, and it is funny, isn't it, Helena? You can see how they look more mild in the skein, and then once you knit them up, it does get a little bit gentler. Much more like heathering, yes. 
100 percent so that's purple sprouting yep and then next one so this is another one of those ones that's got four in it isn't it mm. yes this one is your absolute favorite that you yes. insisted we have I know, I was beautiful. like, I don't care which ones we have, I want this one. And actually now I think I maybe like the other ones, some of the other ones. But I mean, it, yeah. you know, I love them all. They're all amazing. Yeah, but this yeah. one is called Bolotti Bean because they yeah. are fun, sort of speckled -y kind of look with a Definitely. bit of the like purple and the green. And this one also has like a bit of the neutral in there as well. So. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like um, a Monet painting, like one of those water lilies paintings. Yes. Very Especially much. with this green Again, next to it. Such a, like, much more mild when you look at it here, but mm. less so knitted. And then, yeah, this green one, herb garden. Because everyone needs a herb garden in their allotment. Otherwise, how's your food going to knit? Tastes or, nice. Yeah, or at the very least on your windowsill, if you don't have an allotment or a garden. Yeah. But yes. A little bit of fresh herbs makes all the difference. That's why your Daniel's food has been so nice this weekend. Yes lots of nice fresh herbs but this one's just uh, got some purple in it because again quite a lot of the herbs have little purple flowers like you know, lavender and such so I thought that was a nice one definitely. yeah it means that it just goes really nicely with these other ones 100% and then last but definitely not least is maybe the most appropriately named shade of all of them I think it really yeah. is just the color um, and it's Cavallo Nero mm -hmm. yeah definitely is that color and this one is, uh, it's sort of got the like the blacky, purpley blue base and then some like green in there to like bring it up a bit. And again, like you can sort of see it's both of them are fairly sort of subtle, but they're in different ways. Yeah. And it does. It looks almost like a hand dyed or something, I think. And yeah. it's nice the way because it's a mall, sometimes it's a bit more forward and you get a little bright section and then you get a darker section so it's really varied so that's a little close-up of all the yarns mm. and we'll go see the tops in a little bit and chat to some of the mill folks too So I'm just going to say hi to Beth as well, Beth of Telling Yarns, and um, she's bought some of her beautiful skeins with her here today, and she's also done a talk over the weekend as well. So um, hi Beth. Hello. Again. Hi. <laughs> How have you found it? Yeah, really good. It's been such a lovely atmosphere this weekend, really relaxed, and we've got um, tables in here where people have been having their food and knitting and reading, so it's been lovely. Yeah, yeah sort really of like nice. a knit and natter with yeah. added yarn and lovely supplies. Yeah, <laughs> just really relaxed and lovely. So. Yeah. No, yeah. and yeah, it was nice to interview you for your talk the other day as yeah. well. Yeah, we got through it, didn't we? Together? Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, it was fun though. And we had a really nice, like, receptive group yeah. of people, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, I was quite interested to see what people wanted to know about whether it's the kind of business side of it, the yarn, um, the custom blend that I've got, mm -hmm. or the dyeing. And I think it was a bit of everything, um, you know, all those. Things. Yeah, so yeah, it was interesting. No, and I'm a big fan of Beth's stuff, so it was very easy to interview her. And <laughs> we've got some of um, the special that you've done for yeah. us to bring with you for the open weekend. So yeah, so this is uh, yeah Agatha, and we decided on Agatha because of uh, Agatha Christie. Um, so. Yeah, we yeah. she had a connection to the area. I think yeah. she was um, she was born in Devon, and like some of her um, stories were set here as well. So yeah. it's a nice connection, and we're also kind of fans as well. Aren't we? So yeah, well, because I I like to name all my colourways after literary things, so we went with that yeah. and went for very sort of British countryside colours, mm -hmm. um, which I feel are quite John Arvin as well. Yeah, so. we'll do a little close up of the skein knitted up as well because it is beautiful. And um, you can see all of like, you often do a lot of like subtle sort, yeah. of, sort of color shifts and you can really see that here, it's lovely. But no, and uh, thank you for coming for, with us. Oh, thank you very weekend. much, it's, it's been, been a really, really nice. Because we, uh, it's the first year we've had Beth here. So. It is, yeah. yeah, and I've been watching the uh, Mill Open weekend for a few years, so it's been nice to actually be a part of it. Oh, brilliant, so. thank you. <laughs> So here I am with Faye. 
and this is quite a tradition you come into the open weekend now it is now yeah yeah definitely because you came even when it was back at the mill yeah i came during the monsoon years oh when my God. we had torrential rain pouring through the tent yeah that was exciting that was exciting um, so it used to be in a marquee and marquees are wonderful when the weather's nice but it, we do live in the UK and it is off rainy. Yeah. And there was one year where we had a waterfall <laughs> kind of coming through the marquee, yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't we? It was, it was good fun. It was good fun. It was all good fun. <laughs> as long as it was just, I remember like me and Juliet were like, ooh. And then it was like, well, it's now pouring onto a table. So we'll just move the table sideways <laughs> and that'll be fine. And get all the stock off the floor. <laughs> all the cardboard stuff up and out. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. Yeah. And it's very hot here because we've got skylights, but crucially, the skylights are not leaking water, yeah, so it's, it's, it's yeah. great. <laughs> um, but that's not really it's not why, why I here. dragged you to <laughs> chat to these lovely people at home. So. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I, you're wearing yours. I'm going to pop this on. So you've made lots of sizes yeah. of this beautiful cowl. So this is called the Lancaster Cowl, mm. and I know lots of people won't believe it's crocheted, but it is actual crochet. Yeah. And we've used the Mill Special, the Down the Allotment. We have. I can't remember the colours, other than I think this is Bird Cage. Bird Bath. Bird Bath. You don't put the birds in the cage no, when you're out on an Sorry. Not outside. <laughs> this is Bird Bath. <laughs> And I think I've got garden shed. You do have garden because shed. Because there are not many things in this country that are this colour naturally. No. So, but if one paints one shed, then you it's can have colour. a nice teal. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's gorgeous. So how have you done it? You've knitted it sideways. Well, I've, cr I've crocheted it sideways. I do a pop. Honestly. That's outrageous. I'm going to get sold off now. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's crocheted sideways and then you kind of crochet it in three sections, but it's one panel mm. and then you cleverly braid it together and join it and then all the joins are completely hidden Inside. underneath. Yeah, it's beautiful. So it looks like it's one piece, which it is, but it's not crocheted in the round. It's actually crocheted in rows. So there's some actual plaiting yeah. involved. Oh, yeah. Braiding. Yeah, but because cause I'm quite full on, there's also a video tutorial to make sure people know how to do it this is what we love about you Faye, is like i was like i think maybe two months ago i was like Faye, we've got a yarn special and it's only just being finished and yeah. do you think you might be able to do a pattern and Faye has not only made this spectacular cowl but there's actually three versions yeah. <laughs> i think my my middle name should not be bella it should just be thorough because I'm yes. thorough. You are so thorough. Stroking so thorough. thorough. <laughs> no, I so appreciate this, you know. You're, a, you're an inspiration to me. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really fun to do. And and it's nice yarn, isn't it? It's, got it's a beautiful. Good to it. So I can tell you now, even though it's got um, Merino and Jacob in it, it's mm. very... It's very soft. It's almost got this lovely um, like fibrous halo effect to it. And because this is one that I was working on when I was working on the pattern, and I, this is 100 grams, so this one has been reworked four times and it has really stood the test of time. Yeah. Like the whole thing has been ripped out three times and reworked and it's just yeah. really durable but it soft is. and lovely. I think it's quite similar to our Harvest Hues yeah. if folks have tried that before. Because the Harvest Hues is merino with swart balls and this time we've just used Jacob. Yeah, because it's Jacob's lovely cheap, and cheaper spotty. It also passed the sniff test. Oh, it smells lovely. The most important yeah, test of all. The, the skins arrive and the first thing you do is sniff them. Yeah. And yeah. thank you for coming to our open weekend. Are you having a nice time? I'm having an amazing time. It's just, it's really good fun and lovely and such like, nice customers yeah. and nice people. It's just Definitely. a very relaxed yeah. affair. It's lovely. So we aim to please. Yeah. <laughs> and because you not only design, but you've got all of these... We'll have a little pan around in a bit, but look at all these amazing things that yeah. you sell. So yeah, have we do the yarn and then you do everything you need. So to support the yarn. Yeah. yeah. All the things that you didn't know you needed also to be a well, crafter. Exactly. And some things that you really don't need but 
but you want. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, why would you not have them? Exactly. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. You've got so much beautiful, like, leather, and it's all, like, made by real humans. Yeah, proper humans. Like. Yeah. I really love knowing where the goods I'm buying have come from. Yeah. And that could be, you know, China, Lithuania, Finland, yeah. the UK, stuff yeah, that I've yeah. made myself on my laser cutter. But the yeah. whole point of my shop is it's about where stuff has come from, hence why it's called Definitely. Providence Craft Co. I was yeah. going to say, Faye, you haven't told anyone to where to find these goodies. Providence, Providence Craft Co. Okay. online. I'm <laughs> online only and then I come and do a couple of shows throughout yeah. the year with people that I like, like John Arbor and Textile. Luckily for us, because it's amazing. Now, I haven't been shopping yet, but I definitely will before the end of the day, because we're only through the middle of yeah. the open weekend. Yeah. But somebody has been shopping. Oh, well, we don't let Faye buy yarn, but some No, no, I will be buying. See, the problem is I'm facing the seal Sales bin section. and all the little twiddles, and I love doing embroidery, and I have put some yarn aside. Just a, just a bit of yarn. Shall we show them? So Faye has been here for all of yesterday and then a few hours this morning. And Thursday. And Thursday. And Thursday. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. You started on Thursday. Yeah. So Faye started before we were open, but let's, shall we show people? Ready? I feel slightly embarrassed, but it's, it's two jumpers. So. It's two jumpers and it's from the sales section. Yeah. So you had to get in there. Like the, the Scott yeah. in me is like, it's a bargain, it's a I have to have it. And also, although I'm working, I'm not meant to be buying yarn this year, I haven't yeah. told you that, but but holiday yarn is allowed. And this is a little, I'm staying in a shepherd's hut, really I'm on holiday. Yeah. Um, but. There's such a beautiful colour palette. I'm sure folks at home will agree that you obviously yeah. have very good taste. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and then there's one more thing that you, because you sell notions and beautiful wooden things. Yeah. Do, shall we show folks yeah, what you've we've made? Also created a down the allotment. Um, it's a way of working out your wraps per inch, and there are two ways of doing it. So you can either wrap it around or you can lay your hand spun across and get your gauge from there and it gives you all the details that you need. Perfect. So it's another little mill special yeah. that will also be available for the virtual for mill the virtual, open weekend. Exactly. Yeah. So both the cowl and this beautiful this, um, wraps per yeah. inch gauge. So this is just for hand spinners. Just for so hand spinners, yeah. Because we like to look after all the crafters. A little bit of extra love, yeah. don't they? And this Definitely. is on um, FSC plywood and then it's laser cut by me yeah. in my little utility room in Cheshire. Amazing. And it's got a little carrot and a little yeah. beetroot on it. Got to get the veggies in. Got to get the veggies <laughs> in. Yeah. I mean, I haven't personally spun down my allotment, but I'm sure there'll be somebody yeah. watching that I, likes to have a spin down the allotment. I was weeding. We've got a community plot on our allotment and I was helping weed the community plot and kept all of the dock root and dock leaves. Yeah. So I'm currently doing some solar dyeing Amazing. of the weeds that were just going to be um, composted yeah. to try and get that. And it's cr there's quite a lot of um, like interest in what you can it's solar fair. dye coming off the allotment now. Oh, so yeah, cool. the next step is yeah. spinning down you, on the allotment. You get them going. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, by the time I've finished down there, they'll all be crafting. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for chatting. Oh, thank you. And, um, you know, see you in moments uh, off mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. So, we just wanted to take a little bit of time because it's not long to the virtual open weekend now. No, it's, it's really just not. The corner. No, it's the um, 8th and 9th of July, if mm. you didn't know already. Yeah. And um, Lauren's helped me organise it, so we just wanted to let you know a little bit because we haven't had time to mention it to anyone at yeah, home. Yeah, because I know it can be tricky to get here to all the way to South Martin to come and see us for the open weekend. So we know that not everybody can do that, Definitely. but we still wanted to make like a fun, yeah. like, fun occasion for everybody else. So we, yeah, we've got our virtual open weekend coming up. And we'll be, as well as like showing off all the specials that we've yeah. made um, for the in-person open weekend, we've got some other workshops and fun talks to yeah. get involved with as well over Zoom. Definitely. I think it's always nice to make it like a bit of like a kind of fun, playful, creative sort of 
hopefully you'd learn something yeah. so that it's not just like come by our wall it's exactly. like actually an experience you know yeah we just like having a bit of a party don't yeah we? and so. it's also great to invite some teachers and speakers who um who can't come in person either yeah. so you know they might be further afield or it just doesn't work time wise so definitely, yeah it's really nice definitely and i think the thing is like we like learning the things we always just yeah. invite the people we're exactly we, talk, in we like to from. have people here who talk about things we like <laughs> exactly so we wanted to tell you a little bit of who the kind of demoers are at the virtual open weekend and give you a little flavor of what to expect yeah and when this goes up you'll actually also be able to just hop on event right and if something sounds interesting to you just go ahead and book it so there'll be a little link down below yeah and, and it's, it's go gonna and be free so it's all free yeah. and it's all on zoom yeah. so yeah exactly so this is why we've got a little bear here this is moosh you may recognize her from from instagram or from previous yeah. vlogs dressed like an honorary milfolk i know with these little dungarees and um this is a, a pattern from a book by Cynthia and she has been all over the social yeah. media. You've probably seen her and her beautiful knitted toys, so knitted creatures. And she's gonna be talking to us at our virtual open weekend and sort of going through her inspiration, how she comes up with these creatures. Cause she has like a real, um, it's like a real storytelling vibe mm. to it, isn't it? The way she works yeah, and um, it's really fun. So yeah, she's gonna come in and chat to us about how she makes them. Yeah. And yeah. she brings them to life. Exactly. I should say. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so we're really excited for that. And then we've got some other great people as well. So um, we've got um, Saskia, who's the dyer behind the brand Obis, etc. Which we've had a bit of her yarn here to show yes. off, which is nice. And we'll have more at the virtual open weekend to offer to you guys as well. And she'll be, um, she's really into sustainability in her practice. So she'll be going through like what's important to her in that and um, how she goes about doing it. Yeah. And yeah, her sort of what inspires her in her work. Um, so it'd be really, uh, really good to hear from her because that's important to us as well, I, obviously. It's just more and more important as time goes on, you know, it's just a really good thing to highlight without a doubt. Absolutely. And then we've got um, the lovely Bex, who is actually behind the camera yes. at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bex, if you didn't know already, is an amazing spinner. And an incredible and a, podcaster, yeah. Tiny Fiber Studio. Yeah, so she's going to be um, showing um, some really interesting techniques about how to spin and how to use our tops and coloured tops mm. in different ways to create really different effects yeah. in the yarn. I'm no spinner. I haven't. I don't really like know the, the technical way to explain yeah. what she does, but Bex does. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it is going to be absolutely amazing because yeah. just looking at her samples that she's shown us and how she gets such different effects from one type of top yeah. is amazing. Without a doubt. And I think it's about, because we make quite a lot of shades that use tons of different colors within mm. one color. And if you just spin it straightforwardly, they'll all blend and it'll look like our mill spun. Yeah. But there are lots of tips and tricks, which Bex will teach you of like how to separate them out if you wanted something stripey or maybe a fade or you want the colors to mull together. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to that one because yeah. I definitely, the color's the best bit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it so. is really fun. And speaking of color, we've then also got someone, Valerie, who's yes. gonna help put colour palettes together if Valerie, that's something you struggle with. You can find her as Joyance Fibre Arts on Instagram. She's um, she's also a knitwear designer and um, is kind of a pro when it comes to pairing colours for uh, colour work mm. designs and things like that. And um, I know it can be a bit daunting when you're starting a, a colour work project and you're like, oh, where do I start? Or mm. just trying to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So Valerie's kind of going to talk about, um, yeah, those sorts of things, how to pair colours properly. If you've got like a very... Um, complicated project and you've got six colors like what would work best with contrasts and things like that and um, so i think that's kind of useful for everybody yes, isn't it i think we all need a bit of that sometimes definitely yeah and, and then, then we've got shakira from creative pursuit um she does some really cool stuff with embroidery and how to sort of um have a more like mindful approach to things so, so she'll be talking about how she uses her practice to um, inspire like more creativity, letting go, not focusing so much on like the end product, product, uh, product all the time, and like enjoying the 
enjoying the moment. Just enjoy the process. Exactly. You know? Just it's your time off. Yeah. So just enjoy it. So she's going to be showing us techniques, but also trying to show us like how to get into that mindset mm. of like more creative um, making, really. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool. She's a really cool person. And um, yeah, if you just go and look at her Instagram and stuff, you'll get a feel for what she does. It's yeah, really fun. It's lovely, definitely. And it's always nice because, like, obviously, we're knitters foremost, but mm. we also dabble in lots of other crafts. Yeah. So it's nice. And we to know that a lot of, of you guys do as well. So. Exactly. And sometimes it is nice to just do something a bit different. Yeah. 100%. And I it's think great. her class is going to be suited to people who don't necessarily have embroidery yeah. experience. It's just if you've got a few supplies at home, if you've got yeah. a bit of a, um, unspun, if you've got a bit of lace weight, a bit of yarn, you know, you can kind of use what you have to Definitely. make something really cool. And then we've also got a virtual mill tour, of course. Yeah. So Helena and Laura will answer all your questions about the machines and why they're named what they are yeah. and what it is they do and any other questions you might have. And then yeah. we'll also introduce you to our Down the Allotment yarn. And exactly. There's a little virtual show and tell. So it's all go. Yeah. It should be great fun. And in the show and tell, we can kind of, if you have any questions and things you want to see, colour pairings you might want to see yeah. in, the, in the different light or if you want to get any advice about putting things together, yeah. then we can just give you a hand exactly. with that as well. So, yeah. We hope you think it sounds fun, and yeah. if you Ooh, do... Something else we need to mention is the um, the lovely vendors that have, we've invited yes. here, yes. that have been um, been vending here. They've done a really like cool collab each with us, with mm. the, like a really nice collaboration. Um, we've had a, a yarn with Beth from Telling Yarns that yeah. she's done with us, that's um, especially for the open yes. weekend. We've had um, a spinning tool with Faye yeah. that she's been displaying here that's yeah. really nice, and Definitely. we've had... You the may have already special with Rachel. Yes, the Hebra well. Zebra. Exactly. And we've had some so. really beautiful things from Katie, yes. bag yeah. stickers. Yeah. So they'll be sort of showing off what they've yeah. been making with us. And, um, exactly. So that's yeah. how we're going to kick the virtual yeah. off. Is with like, and I'm sure it'll be quite silly because when that many of us get in a yeah. room, <laughs> even if it's a virtual room, when that many of us get in yeah. a room together, it's always a bit silly. So. It'll be fun though. <laughs> Come along and laugh at us. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, all of their beautiful things will be available after the, you know, the virtual as well. Definitely. Oh, well, it sounds like a treat, Lauren. Thanks for organising it all. It's all right. No wonder you need a little holiday next week. <laughs> I'll, I'll be enjoying myself there. <laughs> as much as you can with two toddlers, but yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> <Still>. <laughs> Hi Lauren, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> we're, we're here in Tops, we as are. you might have guessed. Yeah, yeah, it's all around us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, Sam's been here helping people find their chops and bagging it all up and mm -hmm. everything. So how have you found, have you found it? It's been quite a busy weekend, Yeah. Uh, but it's been a good weekend, so yeah, kind of steady, I think. So uh, yeah, but I think people have been really enjoying some of the uh, allotment uh, fibre tops that we've got here. Yeah, no, definitely. I think people are always like, especially people who don't spin, are always pretty like astounded to see this here and just see how many different colours are, like come together in one bit of fibre and how it actually is spun up. It can look so different, can't it? Can. it? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't spin really, but I, I always think it's like incredible to just see the tops and just look at all the different colours that that's are it. in it. Because it can look, yeah, it can look so different. Yeah, so. that's right. But you have made a fibre, haven't you? I have. I have made fibre in the past, yeah, like, yeah. just at home with my little <laughs> hand card uh, and doing like some tiny twiddles here and there. But yeah, yeah. nothing, uh, nothing yeah. on a larger scale, nothing involving a wheel or a drop <laughs> spindle yet. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I love your little sheep, by the way. So. Yeah, so these little badges, uh, Rachel from Daughter of Shepherd was selling them, but um, they're made by a lady called Ruth Packham. Um, and she has, there's a whole range of them in different colours. These are sort of the same, but uh, there's a whole range of different coloured sheep. Um, but it was just too cute to miss, really. Um, so and I just felt a bit devoid of badges, so... Uh, yeah, you've you got know. to have some badges yeah, in here, haven't right. you? <laughs> Did you want to see any of the tops at all? Any of the... Uh, up, down the allotment, isn't it? Not up the allotment, down the yeah, allotment. Yeah, yeah, let's get some out, if they're any handy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there, I'm in the area now with the down the allotment specials. Um, so these are the special tops for the weekend. And there's one in particular I'm going to show you because I know about it, and that's this one here, which is Borage. Uh, which is basically the one which I created for uh, the show. 
uh, and it's got a little bit of everything in it and you probably wouldn't uh, believe it if you're not a spinner but this actually ends up being a sort of a mossy green colour. So there are a few twiddles on here that have been made by the, one of the gills who's been here spinning which you might be able to see them in the background I don't know but um, I don't know if you can see that but that's what one of them um, spun up here so depending on how you spin it it'll come out in different ways but yeah there's lots of different colours here something for everyone and there'll still be some left for the virtual mill weekend so Everyone's everyone's just left, haven't they, Hells? And it's just very quiet. It is quiet. It is quiet. And we've done it. We have. It was a delight. <laughs> it was a delight. Yes. What was your favourite bit of the open weekend? Seeing everything that people have made and brought along to show us. We really love mm. it when people come and show us all their project. We've seen some very wonderful, amazing, sometimes crazy items. Yeah. But it, it's lovely. And like, oh, we've had a couple with people using previous specials, which is yes. always nice to see them come back around. Definitely. So, yeah. And it's been lovely seeing everyone have a nice time on their workshops, saying they've learned lots of nice mm. new skills. So I'm very happy yeah. that they've all enjoyed that. There was just a nice atmosphere, wasn't there? Like everyone seemed to just be like, there was lots of folks like sitting down and just like knitting. And I could tell lots of people were like talking to each other who maybe hadn't met before. It was yeah. like a really nice social. There were lots of people chatting to uh, the guys from the guilds who yes. were demonstrating. So hopefully some more people might be willing to take up some weaving or some spinning. Yeah, so that's definitely. always good too. And if you're watching at home and you demonstrate and have a craft and you might like to come to the open weekend yeah. definitely let us know for next year because we have a little sign up form that will great. come out but yeah exactly so, all welcome exactly i think my favorite bit which i didn't quite get enough time to do but i always love helping people pick color combos it's just like and people put together colors that like i've never thought of before that's a treat. There it's was a nice fun bit. to see things. Definitely. There was a nice bit where I got to sit on the floor <laughs> and help pick colour combinations. <laughs> Little quiet moment. But no, it's been a blast. And um, yeah, we hope all of you watching at home might decide to come one year. We promise it's worth it. And um, But we know it's also, it is miles away. It's a very long way to go. We're very aware yeah. of that. We're not very easy to get to. So because of that, we hope you'll join us in a couple of weeks' time for the virtual open weekend instead. And then you'll be able to see all these treats that we've shown you just now. And also, there'll be tons of amazing workshops. And they're all free. So it's the 8th and 9th of June. July. July. It's the 8th and 9th of July. It's been a long weekend. <laughs> I never know what's happening at the best of times, though. That's why we need each other. <laughs> oh, and on that note, see you soon, hopefully. And cheers. Cheers. <laughs>